Um, as you mentioned, my name is Amber Ward. I work in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is on the east coast of the United States. And I did present last year in Chicago, so there are a couple gadgets that are the same, but I was trying to be sensitive to people who come to every conference, so a number of them are different. Um, this talk is definitely dedicated to my patients and their caregivers because most of the ideas they have created themselves and shared with me. So my background is I have about 10 years of experience in a multidisciplinary clinic. I am the occupational therapist. I'm the only occupational therapist, but I am working full time with ALS MND, which is a little bit unusual in the US. Um, there really isn't a lot of literature on the inventions, on the solutions that people are coming up with to manage that pace of change. Um, there are certainly challenges because of those changes coming fast, and everybody has cost um, and budgetary concerns. Um, they lose their job because they can no longer work. Their caregiver has to quit because they have to take care of them. Where's the money coming from to buy all this equipment that they need? Um, in the US, some of the small pieces of equipment, um, something maybe for the buttons or something for the zippers is not covered by insurance. None of the little small things are. So we have to come up with creative solutions. And uh, the gadgets and gizmos one went pretty well, so I decided to do it again. So my objectives for today are just to provide education. I've got lots of pictures, so if you want to get out your cameras um, to see if there's anything that interests you to take back home, that would be great on existing and some new equipment, some creative problem solving, low or no cost alternatives, and some custom modifications that my patients have come up with. So some existing equipment that I really have found helpful. Two of these, um, these things are very, very useful. The first is a mobile arm support. And what that does is it attaches either to a table or to a wheelchair and it lifts your arm up in space as well as giving you some horizontal motion. For people who cannot feed themselves or cannot brush their teeth, cannot comb their hair or scratch their face, it really gives a lot of vertical lift. You can also use it horizontally to be able to use the computer keyboard or the mouse a little bit more easily. So the top has two examples of this mobile arm support. It is a little bit expensive. We do have a number of them in our loaner closet, which is um, what would be, the, of course, the best option for patients. The Mattress Genie in the bottom picture, right here, is an alternative. Um, Sarah mentioned that we need to have a cuddle between the patients and the caregivers. This is a nice way to stay in your bed if you just need the head of the bed elevated because of swallowing or breathing. It's an air bladder with a pump, and you put it between the mattress and the box springs, you press go, and it blows up to about 30 degrees, lifting the head of the bed. It comes in the twin, the queen, the king, all the different sizes. We've recommended to people if they have a large bed, a king size bed, to get two twins in America that two twins equal a king so that not everybody has to be elevated at the same time. I really like this portable shower idea. This is made by a company called Fawcett and they um, do this portable shower. Um, renovating a bathroom can be very expensive and cost prohibitive for a lot of families. This comes in either a reclining, a very large model, which you probably have to put in the garage, or a little bit smaller model that could go in a kitchen. All you need is a water supply because it comes with an attachment to the sink and the water supply, and then it has a pump that pumps the water back into the sink so it doesn't get all over the floor. It's around 1,000, 1,500 US dollars, but in a renovation, I mean, what, 10, 15,000 US dollars? I mean, it's, it's a dramatic difference and can mean someone could potentially stay in their home longer if they want to get a nice shower and not just a sponge bath. The drink aid on the top is a gooseneck straw attached to a cup that attaches to the chair. So it's a really, really nice idea. Um, it gives you some flexibility and positioning and keeps that water handy for the person in the wheelchair. You don't need to be able to hold the cup to be able to use it. A lot of people don't think about these swing clear hinges right here. 
and they are very inexpensive. But what it does, it has an extra hinge, so it gets the door out of the way of the opening. So instead of the door narrowing your opening by a few inches, it gets it tucks it out of the way, so you have more clear space to drive a wheelchair or a walker or something like that through the door. The wireless doorbells um, were mentioned earlier, but I wanted to show that we often will put it in a little bit of foam and put a piece of um, sticky material on top to build up the switch a little bit. It makes it easier to press. Um, the wireless doorbells in the US are about 12 US dollars, very, very inexpensive. And the range is quite far. So you can have the person keep the doorbell on their wheelchair, in their pocket, something like that, and then it, you, know, you hear that bing bong, um, it goes off when they need help. Um, we've actually, our speech language pathologist, Amy Wright, has actually created a little bit of an alarm right here. It's a switch operated alarm. I was a little bit afraid to bring it because she said one top it went off in her luggage. <laughs> and so I was afraid I was gonna get pulled over by the police or something, but it's really, really loud. And it's a little switch adapted buzzer, which I can, my email will be at the end if anybody has questions about these sorts of things. A lot of people don't realize that the power wheelchair joystick can become the mouse on your wheelchair. There's a little thing called a mouse emulator that many, many companies that sell wheelchairs are starting to produce. It is, gives you the ability to drive up close to the, to the computer and with Bluetooth technology to be able to use your mouse to drive the joystick to be the mouse. And then what you do is you use um, usually the speed control as your switches for left and right click. It's an easy way if you can keep control over the joystick to keep using the mouse on the computer. We often use a golf ball instead of the joystick handle. It's just a nice shape. You can drill a hole in it and just pop it right on there. Works really nicely, very, very inexpensive. Um, we have a number of people using the sip and puff BiPAP or the mouthpiece BiPAP or Trilogy as a lot of folks are using. Um, we have a little different connector than um, the woman this morning showed. You can get gooseneck tubing. I looked on Google for gooseneck tubing and found it um, in all different sizes. It pops apart, so you can make it as long or short as you want. It comes with a little um, end that can screw into the back of the wheelchair, so it makes it very stable instead of a clamp. You can actually screw it onto the, the metal backrest of the chair. It makes it really, really nice. Um, we often use um, inverters to run the ventilator, the Trilogy, the BiPAP, whatever you're using, off the wheelchair batteries. A lot of people don't realize that um, just flat out driving the power wheelchairs, you can get 12 to 14 miles of driving. That's a lot of driving. Most people don't go a mile in a day. So if they need to go to the doctor or they need to get out and go to a softball game for their children, they can do that by tapping into the wheelchair batteries and they don't have to carry that extra battery, the weight of that battery, the size of that battery, to take it along. It's a little inverter. Um, a lot of them these days are coming with not only the plug for the ventilator, but an extra um, car plug so that if you wanted to plug in your phone or plug in your Kindle or your iPad, and charge that at the same time, you certainly could. You have to be a little bit careful, of course, that you're not out for you know, 16 hours or something and draining both the wheelchair batteries, but it does give a nice option for people. With creative problem solving, I really think you have to think outside the box. And in order to be able to do that, you have to have tools. You have to have Velcro and pieces of foam that you've dug out of the trash and tape and um, things like that that you can create with. Um, I really believe that loaners and demonstration models are very, very important so that people can either borrow them because we know that we'll use them for a limited period of time. It'll come back, you can let somebody else borrow it. Um, most of our clinics, we have a bag of stuff coming in and a bag coming out. And so that's a really lovely thing, I think, for people to be able to do that. Um, if you don't have access to a loaner closet, there are representatives from many, many companies that sell these sorts of things that would love to sell more. And so they'll give you a demonstration model. It, um, that way patients can try it before they buy it, if that's the case. Um, and then encouraging creativity in clients and caregivers, I think is very important. Come on. Can you advance to the next slide? 
Thank you. Oops, now we're too far, of course. Um, typing aids and stylus options. The one on the top left is actually from a company called Etsy. They're online. Um, they sell many, many different things, lots of people selling. Um, and so they actually created these little T-handle stylus. But the one in the top in the middle is just some foam that um, our speech therapists put around to make it a little bit easier to hold on to. This one on the right is a piece of fabric. It's conductive fabric, like a lot of people's winter gloves now are having conductivity in the fingertips. It is actually a piece of gold lame fabric, which is conductive, and we just put it on the end of a dowel rod. It's just a piece of wood, um, and as long as it's touching the person somewhere, you can use almost anything to become your stylus. It becomes conductive. Um, in the bottom row, the first two, showing just some options to be able to hold the stylus a little more easily. Um, one of them is, um, in America, a lot of people put things on the top of their antenna of their vehicles. And so you can go out to an auto parts store and buy lots of different things to put on your antenna. So this is a little soccer ball that they, we drilled a hole in to make it easier to hold. And then this is the one on the right is called a typing aid. Very, very inexpensive, but it gives a nice, gets the fingers that drag over multiple keys out of the way a little bit. Some low cost options. So this looks very similar to that drink aid, but I actually created this one, and why I created it was because my patients cannot slurp three feet up that straw time after time after time after time. They just don't have the lip control and the diaphragm power to be able to suck that much. So I created a little ball bearing on the end to make a one-way valve so that the water stays at the top of the straw. So all they have to do is slurp a couple inches and not the entire length of the straw each time they want to take a drink. So I'm happy, I don't have a patent, I'm happy to share. Um, but it's, there's actually a one-way valve straw commercially on the market that I took that, it wasn't strong enough to hold all the water so I added an extra ball bearing, um, stainless steel so it's food safe of course. The one on the bottom is, I was in last year's presentation, but it's just so much fun. I wanted to share it again. This patient came up with this. He called it the tow troller. It's for, it's for a remote control for the TV. Um, he had no use of his arms, and his TV remote was too small to hit with his big toe, so we made a little pointer called the tow troller. Just out of some spare splinting material. I met a woman in Chicago at the um, Nursing Allied Health Symposium a few weeks ago who had developed a double arm sling for patients with ALS who have very weak arms and their arms are sort of dragging and hanging and they don't feel good and they get all the swelling in their hands. She created this little um, double arm sling and the website on the bottom is what allows you to be able to purchase it. It's pretty inexpensive, but it's just a nice way to not have your arms drag. I really like rubber twist ties. They're sturdy enough that you can stand things up. You can wrap them around your hand. Gives a lot of options. They're called rubber twist ties. They come in you know, packs of five or 10. My patients created a beach chair. It wasn't tall enough for him to get out of, so they added some PVC and some metal to the bottom of it and made a really tall beach chair. So now he can get out of it easily. Um, you can buy a bunch of ventilator holders but what's actually much easier, most of the wheelchairs have some sort of post that you can get some big S-hooks and hang your trilogy right off the S-hooks. So it's plenty sturdy. A lot of different ways to hold the iPad and iPhone. Everybody wants this. There's options for the computer um, as well. They can attach onto the wheelchair. They can also just attach onto your leg with some Velcro around your leg. Either, either of these is just options. Just put a little Velcro on the back of the device and it, stick it to your leg. You can stick it to your wrist. You can attach it to the armrest of the wheelchair. Really any way that you need to. Some adaptive clothing. There are many, many, many websites that sell adaptive clothing. My favorite is the buttless pants. <laughs> and basically the pants you go without underwear. You sit in your chair on a, a towel or a sheet or something like that. But then when you get transferred with your patient lift or your Hoyer lift over to the toilet, as you sit down, the, the, the flap in the back opens up and allows you to have access for toileting. Um, buttless pants, really a nice idea. 
Um, one of our patients is extremely creative and created some drawers for his wheelchair. Uh, I just love, thought that was just fabulous. I wanted to show that picture. This one is a gentleman who his bedside commode was not tall enough. They put some wood underneath. His ankles started to turn, so they made him some blocks for his ankles. Really creative, creative families. I love that. These inventions were all created by our families. Um, they basically took, I took my gooseneck and created a couple drink holders, both off the headrest and off the bottom of the wheelchair. This one starts under the armrest and then pivots out. It's a lovely little drink holder. Um, and then this one is actually what's called a camelback. It's a lot of runners and bikers use it, um, and they create it to make it a little more stable. Almost done. <laughs> Um, this woman has um, bulbar. She has, she's an extremely fast typer and was very frustrated that she could only type with one hand because the other hand had to hold her iPad. So we created a little holder out of some splinting material and some Velcro and some strapping material to make her a way that she could type with both hands and still walk around. There's leisure um, adaptations for nearly everything. A lot of places will rent beach wheelchairs. There's adapted fishing, adapted crochet, adapted almost anything. And you turn to your occupational therapist to help figure those out. So the conclusion, stay up to date. Know what's out there. Come to conferences like these and hear about all the fun gadgets. Encourage, encourage your clients and your caregivers' creativity. They, are the, they know what the problems are and they often have solved them. Be the kind of person that they want to share with you. People come to me and it's like, oh, come see what I created, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, communicate, of course, with other therapists around the world. Have trash and tools in your office. My office is a wreck all the time um, because I've got a lot of things that I can use to create and then think outside the box. So this is my favorite quote. To invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Amber, as innovative as ever. Uh, questions from the floor? Okay, one at the back. Thank you for your presentation. I'm a big proponent of the forearm support. In the olden days, we used to call it a ball bearing feeder. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, we tried this device that you demonstrated on two patients, and one was never able to use it at all. One was able to use it for a short time, and as his weakness progressed, he wasn't able to use it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any alternative products that do the same thing like the old ball bearing feeders, or do you know of any other products that might not be quite as expensive? Mm -hmm. there, are, there are more and more of these types of products coming out of the market, and they seem to be more and more expensive every time. There's sort of these robotic arms and these things that do all these kinds of things, but no. About half the patients I find can use them just fabulously, even for a short period, and then the other half just hate them. They can't use them at all. They just don't have the right pattern of strength and weakness to be able to use them, which is why the loner comes in so, so handy. Because if they hate it, they bring it right back. I give it to somebody else and who might, and I've had patients that have used it for two years um, and really, really loved it, so. There aren't a lot of great options. Jayco Orthopedic um, is, the, is the best option, I think. Any more? Gudjun at the back. These are some fantastic ideas. Thank you. But do you know of anyone who created a back camera like you have in cars, you drive back and then you look in the screen to know who is behind you <laughs> because I like to know who I'm hurting. Who <laughs> you're running into? You know what, the easiest, um, cheapest thing, I don't have a backup camera, but what I have found is there's something called an inspection mirror that is used for gentlemen and ladies with spinal cord injuries to inspect their rear end for sores. And it has a little um, wooden handle and then a gooseneck and a lovely mirror. So it almost becomes like a, a bicycle mirror. You can mount it on the chair and move it into any position that you like to sort of work as a backup camera and it's probably maybe 10 US dollars um, as a very, very low tech. You could also go to a bicycle shop 
I think, and get, and get a number of different types of mirrors. There's even some, my mother is a bicyclist, and she has a mirror that attaches to her helmet, and I wonder if you could adapt that and attach it onto the headrest um, or something like that so you have just a little tiny mirror um, in just the right spot. But that would be a great, great thing to invent. Okay, so we're at five o'clock. We've just about finished, so again, can we thank Amber for her presentation?